Hey guys, Jim here. I want to introduce you to something brand spanking new from someone whom, if you're only interested in tactical folding knives, a name that you might not recognize because he has spent his years in making doing traditionals, slip joints, things like that. And there are uh, some occasions where you'll have people that kind of cross over, you know, that love uh, tactical style flippers and folders and stuff like that, but that also may have began in traditionals. But, you know, there are guys like me, it's just not a, a genre that particularly interests me. Maybe something that, you know, my father or my grandfather may have gotten into, but it just never really, I don't know, never did anything for me personally. So what I'm going to show you right now is the very first tactical folder made by Enrique Pena. Uh, he's out of Laredo, Texas. Super awesome guy. I've had a chance to talk to him now a few times on the phone. I had expressed an interest in his work when I had seen a design that he was going to be coming up with and I, I put in an order for it and then I got a call, I want to say about a uh, half a week ago and he says, you know, I'm, I'm scrapping that idea. I don't like the way that um, I was going to be building it, so I'm going to go in a different way. And he says, I want to send you a couple of pictures in a little bit, and I want you to tell me if this is something that you'd be interested in. And those pictures were of this knife. This he has uh, now decided to name the Diesel One, because uh, he used to actually be a diesel engine mechanic, and he thought it was rather fitting. Uh, this happens to be the prototype. And this is the only one that exists right now. He does have two more on his bench right now to follow up in the first two that he's making. And uh, I was able to talk with him a bit today, and he's going to be offering one of those two, uh, one of the very first ones ever made after this prototype, uh, on the live knives show that I'm going to be doing on May 16th. So if you watch that show and you're interested in, in buying one of these knives, you'll get that chance as I bring it out, I'm going to bring it out, obviously, for the right price and everything. And we'll talk about price in just a little bit, because that was one of the things that uh, he was a bit unsure of coming out of the market that he's been making for. You know, he's, uh, he's 35, 36 years old now, and he says, you know what, he goes, I'm really into, he goes, you know, slip joints, obviously, the traditionals I love, I build them, that's my living. But for personal interest, I'm really into the whole tactical style folders, and I like flippers. So I really wanted to make something that had a great interest to, to me, to the passions that I have. So that's when he came up with this. Now, before I open it, I want to talk about this pocket clip, because the first thing that really jumped out at me, you guys know from uh, all the videos that I've made, I'm very particular on a pocket clip on a custom knife. I figure if you're spending in that $400 and above range, you should get something that's more complementary to the flow and design of the knife than just a standard bent spring clip. Now the thing with that is, spring clips are wonderfully functional. They do what they have to do. They've got great tension. They just work the right way. They just don't usually look custom. They look like something out of a parts bin. So I prefer sculpted clips, but if you don't do your sculpted clip just right, it doesn't work all that well. So what Enrique has done here, he has created kind of a combination of the two. You do have a sculpted titanium clip here that just happens to have the functionality of a bent spring clip. This is absolutely genius. It works wonderfully. It goes with the custom nature of the knife, meaning that you didn't just take a piece of titanium and just do a quick bend in it, put two holes in it, and screw it in. This is a nice, custom, contoured, sculpted titanium clip that he's created to function like a spring clip. So in my opinion, this is one of the best clips that you could possibly have ever imagined. You've got a little area here that you can actually grab onto that doesn't add to the tension of the clip in your pocket. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, you know, uh, deep carry clips for that reason because you're forced to grab the clip and squeeze it when you pull it out. It makes it more difficult. This sits right in the pocket. It clips in wonderfully. It's very secure. It's not going to get pushed out. So kudos to Enrique for this incredible clip. Now, this blade is a little bit of black magic 
when I was talking to him on the phone, I was sitting uh, sitting in a chair, and I'm just kind of fiddling with a knife and flipping it and playing with it while we're talking. And he says, what do you think of the cutting edge on it? I said, you know, I said, I haven't even bothered to try to cut anything. So I hopped up, grabbed a piece of paper, and it just glided through it. I mean, truly a razor-sharp knife. So we were discussing that, and it was then that I, was, I kind of laid it on the paper, and I went, wait a second. There's more to this blade than I realized. There's actually a recurve to it and a really pronounced belly. Now, at first glance, I hadn't noticed that. And the, the, I did some quick iPhone photos for Instagram, and please do go there and check it out. And I just I didn't notice either of those things. And it's got a subtle shape to it that is so damn sexy. What I did notice right away that I loved was the fact that he had some really wonderful jimping up here. And then if you choke up on it, something that you really don't see when you first look at it, but the thumb ramp that goes up now drops down for a spot for your thumb. So if you're doing any, you know, finer cutting tasks, you've got a little bit more uh, delicate control over it. But it's not a, in my opinion, it's not a very prominent part of the profile. It just kind of blends in with the rest of the blade. But it's it's wonderfully functional. This is, in my opinion, kind of a worker's knife. This is something that you're going to go and actually do some real work with. The smoothness is fantastic. It is, of course, on bearings. Really, really nicely done. So let's take a look at the construction. We'll start here. They have... Um, Scales, uh, there's scales on both sides. You're going to be getting into lightning strike carbon fiber for this particular example. I uh, did a nice job with the lightning strike carbon fiber. I only found one prickly, and there it is right back there. One little prickly right back there. That was the only one uh, that, I remember, that I recall finding. Did a nice job cleaning it up. I love the custom pivot on here. Looks really nice, kind of a conical shaped pivot coming up. Nothing, you know, extreme or crazy, just a nice added little touch instead of just the Torx head sticking out. Now you do have that adjustability on this side there. He did a nice clean uh, bead blast on the hardware. Uh, you just got two screws here visible through the scale. And I love his backspacer. Now even though I'm not a fan of such huge backspacers, he did a nice job with it. It's a nice gear pattern, completely flush. And one of my favorite features on this knife right here, a little cutaway that allows you to put a lanyard around the lanyard post if you are the kind that likes to use a lanyard. If you're not, there are a lot of people that go, I don't like a lanyard, I don't want a big old hole through my frame looking like shit. This is nice and clean, the same thing that uh, Jesse Jaros does on his knives. Very nice, very clean, practical, and it's out of the way. It's not obtrusive to the eye. Uh, it doesn't stick out of the design at all. Nice clean work all the way around. There's more of the lightning strike carbon fiber. And he did a really nice acid etch, super dark stone wash, which pronounces uh, the lines around the flat coming up from the main bevel. Big prominent swedge coming down. Gives you a really, really nice effect. Get it to focus a little better. Nice clean work. And I actually like that his maker's mark is somewhat, I don't know, it doesn't jump out. And in certain lights, you almost don't see it at all. It's there. It's easily read. It's legible. But it doesn't jump out like a friggin' billboard. Uh, he did make the word proto uh, pretty pronounced on the other side. Very easy to read, very easy to see. Um, this prototype is already sold, unfortunately. I was, I was like, well, you know, instead of having to wait for the one that I ordered, uh, I'd love to buy this one. He's like, nope, I already promised it to a really, really, really special person. So this will be going back to Enrique for him to just do some once-over on it, make sure, I guess, that I didn't screw it up in any way, and then send it along to its rightful owner. This is a beautiful example of somebody that's coming from one genre and trying their hand at a new one and just doing it fantastically. Now, when I talked to him today on the phone, there were only a couple things that I mentioned that uh, I personally would have changed. And they're uh, actually going to be implemented. He was uh, very thankful for the input and he saw the need for those very minor changes. And they are minor. 
And it's the same thing you've heard me talk about with other makers. Uh, one was the fact that the flipper tab has little sharp edges right there on these corners. And depending on how somebody decides to flip it, it may be something that could be troublesome for them. So he's going to just kind of dehorn those edges. He's going to add jimping to the front face and to the top side. So if you're a push button kind of guy, you're going to have jimping here so your finger doesn't slide off. And if you're a light switch kind of guy, you're going to have it up there as well. The other thing I had noticed was I liked the fact that he flat faced the detent. I don't know if I can get enough light in there for you to see the detent ball. But he did do a flat face detent, which allows you to get a sharper, snappier flip. Um, some of the best flippers in my personal collection have a flat face detent. And it's usually only the really, really high-end makers that, that know to do that. So it was really cool to see him do that. Uh, but it really wasn't a strong enough detent because you can just barely touch it. Uh, and it wants to open up. And it doesn't give you uh, enough action on it. Now, if you're going to push button it, as you see, it's a nice quick flipper. But uh, if you are the kind of just kind of rocks back on it, it doesn't always want to go to full lock. So he's going to add a stronger detent. Um, his uh, liner lock tension is fantastic. It feels really good. The engagement is nice. Really, really impressive lock geometry on there. He did a great job rounding off that liner. I would actually, as I'm looking at it now, I'd love to see the liner just a little bit taller than the scales, just so your finger kind of drops onto it easier, so you don't have to drop your thumb in between the frames in order to unlock it. But I thought that would be kind of nice. Another thing that he's going to be doing, this wasn't my idea, this is something that he had been considering. He asked me what I thought of the uh, blade thickness. And I said, oh, this is perfectly fine for our all-around everyday EDC. But the more we talked, the more we talked about this being kind of a grunt knife, something uh, that really could be, you know, a practical work knife. And he says, I kind of want to go with that theme. So I'm just going to go a little bit thicker. He's not going to do anything crazy like a, a 220 thou thick blade or anything. Uh, but he is going to go a little bit thicker on the blade stock than this prototype just to make it a little bit more tool-like. And honestly, the extra uh, added weight is going to make it uh, uh, flip out a little bit nicer as well. There's a little bit of a squeak. I know you guys are hearing it. And uh, that's going to be addressed before he ships it to its new owner. But um, this is really technically the first completed knife that's going into production that he's built that's not a traditional um, knife. So I think it's just amazing. What you're looking at here is a CPM 154 steel blade. If you measure it from here to the tip, it's three and a half inches. But if you go back um, to the ends of the frame, you're actually getting nearly a four inch blade. So you've got a nice size knife. I'm going to call it three and three quarter inch blade just to be safe. It's nine inches overall and being lightning strike carbon fiber with fairly thin titanium for the frame, this is a wonderfully lightweight knife. This is the kind of thing where you can carry a full size knife and not feel burdened by it. The cool thing about Enrique is uh, all the work that he's done and, and kind of how he's gotten started. He made his first knife when he was 13 years old. He built his own grinder. He built a uh, stone grinder using a motor that he bought at a flea market for five bucks and a stone and arbor that he purchased at an Ace Hardware. Um, he says his first knives were created from old files and assembled with very simple kind of crude wooden handles. But he realized that he enjoyed what he was doing, even though they weren't the prettiest and fanciest knives. He enjoyed, you know, working with his hands and doing that. He had stopped making knives for several years, and he started back up in 2006 when he saw a custom knife that his friend uh, Armando Flores had made. And he's, it just kind of like reignited that passion in him. And he actually had Armando take him under his wing and teach him how to go about making, in a professional manner, how to go about making knives. Uh, then he met uh, uh, some other makers and, and kind of got basic ideas from a lot of different people and helped him refine his knife making skills. And what he's done is he's turned his love of knives and knife making into a career and, and he's been doing very very well with the traditionals I mean you could buy I mean you know a five seven blade knife you can pay like twenty two hundred dollars I mean that's the level of knife making he's at so just because you haven't heard of him in this arena don't think that he's some kind of newbie coming out of nowhere you've got to have a certain degree of experience to create something that I feel is this well-rounded 
He's taken every part of this knife, contoured everything for comfort. He hasn't forgotten anything. Every little detail is there. Now, I love the, the jimping that's been done in here on the liner. I love the fact that it's been rounded and the surfaces here have been rounded so you don't pinch your finger in between there like you guys have seen I talked about a lot on my RJ Martin Q36s you know they would always give you that dreaded pinch no pinch whatsoever here he's kept a great blade profile that uh, complements the handle shape very well the flipper tab it's an extreme angle but it follows with the shape um, at, at this end of the handle everything was well plotted out his grinding is fantastic just magnificent work, an extreme edge. I don't know, I guess I have a piece of paper over here. Doo, 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 doo. Now this is somewhat thick paper, so it's not the most impressive thing in the world, but I mean, guys, this is, <laughs> it's ridiculously, ridiculously sharp. I mean, that is a clean cut all the way through. He did a fantastic job keeping a nice smooth action fast even though it doesn't have an incredibly strong detent, it's got a wonderful action to it. Realize this is, you know, not, you know, broken in or anything. I can only imagine after a thousand cycles how, sm how much smoother that's going to get. This is not a satin or mirror polished blade, so he doesn't have a completely glass-like surface in there. So to achieve this degree of smoothness is quite remarkable. Ergonomics again are fantastic. Here's how it fits in my hand. I wear a size large glove, choking up a bit on it, and then my thumb automatically drops where he intends it to go. Feels good in the reverse grip as well. One of the things I noticed that I loved, almost like a fighter style, the butt of the handle does come up and wrap around your finger so it kind of locks you in. You're locked in up here with the flipper tab acting as a finger guard. And then right back here, there's just enough of a hook to help you feel secure, but it's not crowding your hands. So if you've got somewhat large hands, you're not going to feel crowded and cramped into a small area. You've got plenty of room, and it's more of a gentle sweep than a, you know, a really big curl in. Just feels great. I think he's done a fantastic job here. Now, the thing is, he's not really taking orders. Uh, he and I discussed a few different ways that he was thinking of selling his knives in the future. I'm not going to talk about that because, you know, he may change his mind. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. But I will say that if he does go through with the idea that he was discussing with me, it was one of the best ideas that I've heard. You know, you guys know I despise the lottery system. Um, to me, luck has no place in commerce. And what he's looking at doing is a really good common sense approach to selling knives when you have more demand than you have supply. So I think he's going to have great success with that. Uh, I feel very fortunate that he's going to be uh, sending out one of the very first ones ever made for me to offer on my show. Uh, that's truly incredible. So Enrique, thank you for that. I will say this. If you're looking at following his work, Maybe you want to try and uh, get an order in or whatnot. I would do it sooner rather than later. If you want to follow what he's doing, see his works in progress and things like that, he is on Instagram, which if you're into knives at all, you need to be a part of the Instagram knife collecting community. It is the best way to see what the hell is going on. Uh, he goes by at EP3757, at ep 3757. Uh, go follow him, watch what he's doing, see the cool stuff that he's doing, and keep an eye out because I, he did discuss that he wants to look at doing, holy crap, I just moved my finger right across the side and it just split my skin right open. Wow, look at that. Didn't draw blood yet, but uh, I mean, I barely touched it. So yeah, if you're tired of getting knives that aren't really super sharp, you're going to love this guy. He makes a hell of an edge. Uh, so the, that was a little friggin' scary. Uh, so he has discussed that he wants to do a few different models. So definitely keep your eyes open. I think this is going to be a guy that's going to bring a lot of surprises into the industry. And I think we all, we all deserve that. We all deserve to be able to save money, too. Um, when we were discussing prices, I said, you know, what are you looking at selling these for? And he threw the number out at me, and I said, well, I said, that... 
might scare some people, you know, it's gonna, it's, you know, you're not a name that everybody knows in this genre yet. Obviously his customers that may cross over from traditionals are gonna go, yeah, well, I know the quality of his work, boom, here you go. And I said, you know, there's a lot of competition out there. It seems like everybody and their brother is making a tactical style knife, in particular flippers. So he's actually going to be adjusting his prices. I'm not, again, I'm not going to state that because anything can change. And I don't want people to try to box him into what I'm saying. All I'll say is this. This is going to be out of the box, a very affordable, full custom knife. This particular knife, the prototype, is all hand built. Um, you know, he's using a bandsaw and a grinder and uh, his press. That's it. That's what he's using. There's no CNC. There's no wire EDM. Uh, there's no water jet involved. And that's not to say that it, it's something that he shouldn't be looking at, because I have a feeling, judging by the quality of his work and by the prices that he will announce at some point, I think he's going to get a huge amount of orders. And I think the only way that he's going to be able to satisfy that is maybe having his blades uh, water jet and having his frames water jet. You know, everything oversized and then he can, you know, then bring it down and do everything by hand. But at least get some of the dummy work done. And I say dummy work not out of disrespect to any uh, knife makers out there, but that's not the most challenging part of what they're doing. It, it, it's one of the things that slows them down is profiling, cutting out their own blades and cutting out their own frames. By doing that through CNC or water jet, it saves them time and everything else is still done by hand. It doesn't really take away from the process. And at least that way, maybe it affords them to build maybe one extra knife a week or two extra knives in a week by saving him that time. I'm the kind of guy I welcome that because this guy, I think, is going to explode. So if this is the kind of knife that you're interested in, if you've uh, had good luck with my recommendations in the past, I'd say take a chance on him. Uh, go visit his website. Uh, I don't remember the, oh, geez, what is the website? Uh, I apologize, guys. I'm ill-prepared. Uh, epenacustomknives.com. So it's E-P-E-N-A, customknives.com. Go check out his work. See what he's done. Get a feel for the guy. And I'm telling you, if there's a way to do it, get in on his books, because I think that you are going to be uh, wonderfully, pleasantly surprised with the work that comes out of his shop. And I can't wait to see what comes in the future. All right, guys, that's it for this sneak peek preview slash um, world debut in the tactical knife field for Enrique Pena. I'm going to get out of here for now. I've got some more videos to get done. Thank you, as always, for watching. Follow me on Instagram at TV, And I will see you on the next video.